are here to receive a word from you that will keep our hearts to your vision. To serve and love you first of all. To live our lives for you all the days of our lives here on earth. Therefore, Father, we ask with all that as you want comfort this morning, help us that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will grant us the interpretation. Amen. That, Lord, as we receive the interpretation from the Holy Spirit, we will have understanding. Amen. And our walk with you will be a glorious one. Amen. Have your way on in that, O Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if somebody's excited to have this on. Amen. 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 You know, it's always a beautiful thing to be in the presence of the Lord. It is not yesterday something happened in my place. A man that was paid to do a job. I was inside and when I came out, I saw the choristers all gathered and were folding their hands. I didn't pay, I didn't take notice of anything. I just called the one of one of them because I needed to send him somewhere. And when he came close, he made a statement. See me like this. I they wake up for money, nothing do me, I they joke with God. Why did he have to make that statement? A man that was very strong, very active, doing a job for us, was actually molding gloves for us, all of a sudden fell down, fell to the ground and began to, to shake. They say epilepsy. I have not witnessed it before. And I was asking them, where's the man? They said the man is down there, he's shaking seriously, he's foaming and all that and all that. Dearly beloved, each time you wake up in the morning, what runs through your mind? That you put on your wares, goes out, and comes in in safety, what runs through your mind? That you walk on the road, and you are able to cross the road, you send your children out, they go out and return in safety, what runs through your mind? Do you think it's by your own making? No, it is not. Dearly beloved, this morning we want to look at a topic that says leaving everything to follow Christ. Leaving everything whatsoever. Whatever that may seem like very important, Paul says everything is permissible but they are not beneficial. Leaving everything. When we talk about leaving, we mean we just mean living, surrendering, abandoning, walking away from something, and then following Christ. I am so privileged this morning that I have to be the one to talk to the Church of Jesus Christ. And considering the, the slogan of the Girls' Brigade, seek, serve, and follow Christ. Meaning it is a command that is mandated on us to marry out. It is not just enough, dearly beloved child of God, to go to church. The question is, as you are in the church, how is your work with God? As you are in the church, what relationship do you have with Him? As you are in the church, do you still have something you are holding on one hand? And you have the law on the other hand. As you are in the church, are you totally, or have you totally surrendered yourself to him? Or you still have something you always fall back on? We live in a world where people are doing little to the right and little to the left. We live in a world where although we, we see the, 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 the name of the Lord in our mouth, yes, no wonder Jesus speaking to the people, he says, you, 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 you call me with your lips, your Lord, but your heart is far from me. You call me your Lord, if I therefore be your Lord and Savior, where is my honor? You can only honor a man that you have left everything to follow. Whosoever you are not committed to in following, you cannot 
love that person the way you are supposed to love a person. And that's why I just love the, the, the hymn we took for the summer. Andrew had the call and he left everything to follow Christ. We read about a lot of persons that heard the call of Jesus and left everything to follow him. Dearly beloved, you may be one among those who was brought into the church because of the tradition of the church. That from your infancy you were brought into the church and you were initiated into the fold of Jesus Christ. There's a Christian fold and you grew up like that. But one question I will always like to ask the people and we always want to bring to the knowledge of the people is as a person, do you personally, have you ever had an encounter with the Lord? A personal encounter. Not because my mommy brought me to church or my parents took me to church as infant. As you keep growing up, what is your relationship like with the Lord? What are the things that you think that are most important and of value to you that you cannot just let go? Galatians try to help us to highlight some of those things that may possibly not allow us to follow Christ the way he will want us to follow him. In Galatians chapter 5, the Bible says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Because we were bought with a price. And therefore we don't have to rubbish ourselves again. Having been washed from our own self. Having been redeemed from our own self. And now we have been brought into a new self, into a new fold. The fold that, that Christ is the head and the master of all. Having been brought into this new fold, you don't need to go back to entangle yourself. Because the Bible says, if a man be in Christ Jesus, all things have passed away, and all things have become new. Leaving everything to follow Christ is just saying to him, Lord, I will go with you all the way. The Bible says, he met a man who said to him, Master, I want to follow you. He said, look, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, because the best of the field, they have a nest. But the Son of Man had no place. And another, he turned to and said, follow me. He said, ah, Master, I have my parents to go and bury. I have a dead person in the house to go and bury. I cannot just follow you. Let me go and bury my dead first. Then I will think whether to come follow you. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. And another, he turned and said, follow me. And I will say, I have to go and bid farewell before I will come follow you. Dearly beloved, this might not be just an ordinary thing. This might be the hindrances, the opposition, the challenges, the, the, the confrontations, the temptations that stares us in the face. That many times we want to take a step for the Lord. We see those things popping up and we find ourselves falling away. And what are those things? As Galatians chapter 5 will record from verse 13. The Bible says, or from verse 13, I said that, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because many times, what is our problem? Is that we keep on battling with the flesh. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life has denied us. That cordial relationship with the Lord has denied us from following him. Selflessly, wholeheartedly. Sometimes I say, if you want to enjoy the Lord, you must follow him sheepishly. Just foolishly follow him. He tells you turn right, you turn right. Turn left, you turn right there. Go forward, you go forward. But because of the flesh we carry, many times we question, why do I need to turn right or left? Why do I need to go forward? When I feel like going the other way, why do I need to do that? Dearly beloved, I want us to look at these things carefully. The Bible says, for the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you do not do the things that you wish to do. If we remember the cry of Paul, he said, what a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me from this body of sin? For the good things I desire to do. You wake up in the morning and you say to yourself today, 
Let me talk especially to the young people that today I am not going to abuse anybody. But before you knew it, abuse is running from your mouth. Today I am not going to disobey my parents. But before you knew it, you find yourself doing the same old thing that you said to mommy or daddy yesterday, I am sorry, I will never do it again. Why? Because there is war constantly in our body between the flesh and the spirit. This thing keeps worrying. And the only way to overcome is to follow Christ closely. To follow him without looking back, without considering anything because when we follow him, we will lead the way, and at the end of the day, we will be happy ever after. In following, what should we do? In following Christ, what should we do? Number one, we have to be consistent. We will see this attribute, attribute of following. What should be the attribute of following? We see it in Elisha when he was following Elijah. Elijah said to him, stay here in our first Bible lesson. Stay here and wait for me while I go over there. He said, no, I cannot wait. I will go with you. At a point, a black check was given to him. What do you want me to do for you? And he states what he needed. And Elijah said to him, if only you will see. And so I want to run through just things that is expected of us in following what we need to do. Dearly beloved, child of God, number one, you have to be consistent. In following Christ, don't say, you know, some of us, we glory in past glory. How do I mean? I, I remember yesterday, what is happening today? I remember that time, I used to pray 100 hours, what is happening? That even a day, you cannot pray. I remember when I used to study the scripture very well, what is happening now? I remember when I walked, I remember, I remember, what is actually happening? Why are you not doing the things you gave? And so in following Christ, in order for us to enjoy fellowship with him, we have to be consistent. Number two, we have to remain focused. Elijah said to Elisha, if only you will see, meaning you have to be alert at all times. You don't have to allow anything to distract you. These days, a lot of things distract us. And this distractment, we find it in Galatians chapter 5, Verse 19, because the Bible says, the work of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outcomes of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries. All these are things that are capable of distracting us. And if we are not careful, we find ourselves deviating from where we are supposed to be. And so we have to also be persistent in our following. We have to be committed, consciously be committed to the following in all things. We live in a world where wickedness has taken over the entire place. We live in a world where out of 100, you will discover that 99, if not 99.5, are thinking differently. And you will look so indifferent in the midst of others. Because to you, you know that this thing, this particular thing is white. And somebody is telling you this thing is black. And you are feeling so helpless. Dearly beloved child of God, whether you have supporters or not, I know and I know that what with the Lord is a majority. And so you have to be focused. Even in our career, in pursuing your career, in that dream that you have, you have to be focused. You don't have to allow anything to distract you. You have to be committed. You have to be determined. Without determination, every and every, every single disappointment that comes your way, you want to give up completely. And therefore, you have to be determined in your spirit, soul, and body that I have made up my mind. And some writer says, I have made up my mind to follow the law. And the other one says, the wall behind me, the cross before me. You have to fix your gaze on the cross of Jesus that is before you. It pays to serve Jesus. Come rain, come sun. 
Many times, someday you know, I told somebody, I said, we always pray for the will of God. But the truth of the matter is whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not. When the will of God sets you in the face, at first sight, it is not always welcome. Oh God, let your will be done in this situation. And God will present his will. You will reject it. At that first instance, you will reject it. Until you will have to use his sovereign will to force it on you. Then later on, we will now come to realize that what was presented to us was nothing but the best. And then you begin to thank God. Ah, thank the Lord, oh, that I did not. Ah, I almost gave up. What am I trying to say? We do not have to relent in following the law. We also have to be observant. Jesus speaking, say, watch and pray. Observant. What is that thing you need from the law? What is that desire? What is that request? Are you able to hear him speak? When he speaks, do you hear him? And when he reveals it to you, are you able to see? How is this relationship like? How close are you with the Lord? So that he can guide and direct you. Anything outside God is not worth it. And also we have to put action. We have to put faith to work. We have to believe him in all things. Because we know that with him all things are possible. No compromise. I can imagine if... Elisha had compromised if he would have been able to get the double portion of Elijah's anointing. And of course we know that he did double miracles as compared to that which God did through Elijah. What is our purpose for existing? Why do we exist? Why are we living? I want us just to take us through some points that number one in following Christ we must be like him there is no two ways about it he said I am coming with my reward I am coming soon and my reward is with me to give to every man according to his words whatever I do in the open and whatever I do in the secret before the Lord they, 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 they are very clear and open there is no secrecy with him I may present myself before every individual to be the most sincere and honest person. But who am I truly when no eyes are on me? Or when no eyes are on me? Who am I? So we have to, we must be like Christ. Number two, we have to care about his people. He said to Peter, do you love me? Feed my flow. How do you care for your neighbor? How do you care for one another? There is a neighbor in your compound. Dearly beloved, let me tell us, sometimes we suffer certain things we suffer because we have neglected the, 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 the little instruction that God has given to us. The Bible made me to know that when your will pleases the Lord, He Himself will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. So you don't need to go out fighting. Some of us, we make the mistake of fighting with physical strength. I know that it is this man that is hating me. And you go confront him. Why? You know why you do that? Because you don't even know your base. If you know your base and know your right in Christ, you don't need to confront anybody. You have your knee. You have your mouth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody in the house? You have your knee. You have your mouth. He said, put me in remembrance to my word. What is the word of God saying? When you have issues, when somebody will unduly hate you, when men will unduly rise up to, to oppose your progress, your success, what do you do? You don't go confronting because it will simply show that you are weak. But there is a better way. You can't follow Christ and you will not defend your cause. Amen. Amen. And so number three, he, the reason or the purpose is to save and not to destroy. And I said, Master, let's call down fire like Elijah did. And he said, no, that's not our purpose why we are existing. Sorry to say this. There's one prayer that always makes me laugh. Always very funny. And what is that prayer? They die that kind of prayer. Especially as 
I am now. I, maybe I know this one is not in good terms with this one. That one is not in good terms. And we are all gathered in New Town Church just as we are. And we are beginning to rain down fire. Oh God, my neighbor, in your heart of heart, you know the enemy you are targeting the fire to. If the fire should come down, would, will all of us not be consumed? Hello? Ah. If the fire should come down, will all of us not be consumed? Dearly beloved child of God, in following Christ, you don't fight your battle. He said, the battle is mine, I will repair. In following Christ, you don't keep enemies. In following Christ, you don't say, I hate this person. Why should you hate somebody? Because when you hate, you have already taken the battle up from the hands of the Lord into your own hand. And he will allow you to fight it. But this morning, may the Lord grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Be full of compassion, make sacrifice, and preach Christ's kingdom. Thank God today, this girl's brigade service. Our reason for existence is to preach Christ's kingdom to everybody, to all. Whether you like the person's face or you do not like the person's face. If I leave everything to follow Christ, what benefit do I start to get anything from him? Yes, the benefits are too numerous to mention. But I will just give us seven. That number one, the benefit of following Christ is that you have peace with God. Peace, he said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Number two, you have joy and unspeakable. From Romans chapter 5 verse 11, the joy of the Lord will just flow through your heart. Because you know that you don't have anything to worry. Number three, the knowledge of the love of God. From 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, it's the Bible talks about love. That greater love has no man than this. That a man has to lay down his life for a friend. Number four, beta relations. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Beta relations. When we look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Are you sure, seated here this morning, under the sound of my voice, there is a free mind, or you have a free heart? You can beat your chest to say, I have nobody. I owe nothing against anybody. My heart is free. I owe no grudges against anybody. Forgiveness has become the reason why we, we tear ourselves into pieces. Forgiveness has become the reason why we can't even help ourselves. Or unforgiveness, rather. Unforgiveness has been the reason why we fight ourselves night and day. Unforgiveness has become the reason why we are living our lives to please the devil because of unforgiveness and inability to let go of whatever hurt anybody has against you. Dearly beloved, you cannot claim to follow Christ, yet you have all hatred, bitterness, anger, jealousy, envy in your heart. You cannot claim to follow Christ and you have all wickedness in your heart. You cannot claim to follow Christ, yet the little hurt that has been committed against you cannot let it go. You are only behaving like the devil, looking for an opportune time to pull the person down. Why are we called brethren? Why are we in the church? Why are we called Christians? When the first set of apostles, or when the apostles were named or that Christian was not because they went to church. It was by their deeds. When the people saw the way they behaved, they said, for real, these people have been with Christ. Can somebody look at you? Even when your pastor is not there, even when no member of, the, of your church is there, somebody will look at you and say, of oh, the truth, this man is a child of God. This woman is a child of God. This child, this boy, this girl is a child of God. What are the testimony of people about you out there? It doesn't matter who we are on a Sunday morning. I stumbled on a song that was one of the senior friends sent to me. He said, on Sunday morning, you become a Christian, but you fight your neighbor all through the week. From Monday to Saturday, you are fighting your neighbor. On Sunday, you automatically become a saint. Is Christ 
the law of Sunday alone. Have you been told maybe that rapture will take place on a Sunday? And that's why maybe two, three hours we shall our differences come into the church. Yes, judgment will start in the church, but who told you that it will be on a Sunday morning? How sure are you? In your work with the Lord, how are you working with him? Do you have that compassion that Christ had for one another? Do you have that love, that genuine and sincere love for each other? Dearly beloved, unforgiveness has caused us so much that at this time, I pray that the eyes of our understanding will be open, that we will say goodbye to unforgiveness so that we can stand to fight the devil down, so that we can stand to take the battle to the devil's gate and win and conquer and be victorious. Some of us, we go through a lot of things we go through because we have refused to let go. Sometimes I find us telling a blatant lie even before the Lord. Forgive us our sins even as we forgive. Are you sure? Forgive me my trespasses even as I, meaning you have done it first. And even the Lord being so lenient and so compassionate in all his doing, being so faithful. He said, when you bring your gift and you remember that you have something against somebody, or you have something, your brother has something against you, you have something against your brother, you have the gift, go and reconcile. The ministry of reconciliation has been given to us, but are we making use of it? Every day we are praying, oh God, kill my enemy. Are you not somebody's enemy? Are you not somebody's enemy? If God should answer the selfish prayers we pray, the way we pray them, who will survive? Sometimes with wickedness in your heart, you pray, oh God, kill my enemy. Some of us say, oh God, how I wish this man's wife will die so that I take over. How I wish this man will die so that I, I, I take over the position. Yes! God is not a selfish God. He's not an author of confusion. Why should you be praying for the downfall of your brother? Because you want to go up. Who told you that the pulling down of one another is what will bring your promotion? Dearly beloved, when your ways are right with the Lord, He makes things go easy for you. You don't need to pull anybody down. You don't need to blackmail anybody. You don't need to scandalize. You don't need to tell that best false witness. You don't need it before you go off. Because the more you do, you will only end up exposing your true self and blocking your own self. Because the people you go to spoil the other person for, they know who you are. Church, are we together? They may not tell you to your face. But they will only say, okay, I'm here. Thank you for coming. Well, you know, I'm doing it because I love you. Thank you. But what have you ended up doing? Selling yourself very cheap. I went to a salon wanted to make my hair. And somebody came in. The girls were talking. They were using a, da a particular dialect. They were talking. And when the man came in, he said, why are two of you so close? Are you sisters? They said, no. He began to interview them and along the line he said, wow, what a beautiful relationship in my office. Please with due respect, very due respect to all my people here. Behave this. He said, in my office I have two brothers who are from the same place, same language speaking. They are epic, they are epic people. That this one will come to him and say, you see this is my brother, I don't trust this is my brother. Me, I don't even trust him, even though we are from the same place. That thing you want to do, don't just trust him. Don't even go to him. We'll leave. And this one also will come to him and say, see that my brother, don't even trust him. Don't. I felt so embarrassed. So ashamed. Even though they didn't know where I came from. But I was like, is this true? Is this actually what is happening? And the first thing that always comes across my mind, or crosses my mind is, we are all Christian. On a Sunday morning, you take your bag and move out and go to church. Yet, in the office, 
you are trying to use somebody to block the way of your brother. Why? Hallelujah. Amen. Dearly beloved, time will not permit us. But my prayer is that God will grant us understanding Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, these things have become a thorn in the flesh for us. Benefits of following the Lord. Number five, we will have a healthy lifestyle. Number six, you will have a better self-image because when you follow Christ, you will not think of bringing down another person. For, the, for that particular guy, the other two guys have messed up themselves. They have tarnished their own image because to him, they cannot be trusted. And that's why, why do sometimes when people go to hire people to carry out wickedness for them, they will turn back to kill the people because they don't even trust them. If you can betray your husband, if you can betray your wife, if you can betray your brother, if you can betray your sister, if you can betray your boss, then one day you betray me. So after executing their task, they will bring you down. So don't think that whoever that is paying you to do wickedness loves you so much. No. When you finish executing their task, you will be the next target. So in following the Lord, Say goodbye to every world living. And number seven, the benefit is that you will be you'll be fearless, meaning that the Bible says that the righteous shall be as bold as the lion. So you will not have anything to fear because you know there is no skeleton in your cover. Even to our young ones, in the school, what is your relationship like with one another? Do you go doing a thing, spoiling things, and telling and putting the blame on another person just for the person to be punished and you will be happy? What do you stand to gain? Consequences of rejecting or not following Christ. Number one, who will have peace? There will be no peace because the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. Your peace will be taken from you. Number two, you will live a life of hopelessness. Why are we having all the trouble we are having in the world? Because some time ago, some persons were gathered in the name of, will I say, bad boys, area boys, who strong towns and all that. And they were given a weapon to hunt down our enemy and promise them heaven and earth. And at the end of the day, they were not given. They now have to talk back and begin to hunt those who made a promise, yet could not fulfill their promise. And their lives. They destroy. So the life of hopelessness, the Bible says the thoughts I have for you, the plans I have for you are of good and not evil, to give you hope and expected end. Why then do you want to waste your life? Number three, there shall be no justification. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, Now therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you are not in Christ Jesus, automatically there is condemnation. But far be it from us in the name of Jesus Christ. You will lack rest. You will have life without the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your end will be bad because the Bible says, those on his left, he will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. What are your works? Are they the works of iniquity or the works of righteousness? Number seven, finally, is eternal death. Let nobody deceive you. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Are you ready? Are you prepared? On which one you will go? Last year we talked about living with eternity in view. Today, that theme should run to the end of age because every individual has eternity. But one thing is, where will you go? Eternity in hell or eternity in heaven? What is your life like? Don't wait until Christ comes. Because these days, you look at the billboard, 32, 28, 7, everybody is dying. The moment the Bible says it's appointed unto a man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Today is the day to make it right with the Lord. Today is the day of salvation, to correct every wrong. The Bible says salvation is found in no one else except in Christ Jesus. He's here to save as many that will be ready and willing 
to let go and to follow him. Child of God, on whose side are you? Whose side are you? Is it on the side of the Lord or on the side of the devil? Whoever follows the Lord has benefit and reward. He talked about his covenant of perpetual priesthood in Numbers 25, 10 to 13. There is reward in following the Lord. It is not by God, it is not by man, but it is by the grace of God. And my prayer this morning for us is that the grace of God will be available unto every one of us. That as we follow Him with the whole of our heart, saying goodbye to the world and embracing Him wholeheartedly and completely, we will live a victorious life. We will live a life of victory and we will have every reason to rejoice. And at the end, heaven will be our portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, treasure.
Can you just reconcile with him? Nobody may know, but God knows. I may not know you, but he knows you. Maybe it's for your sake. Jesus is calling somebody to come follow him. Maybe you are the one. Please let this opportunity not pass you by. The best gifts, the best assets, the best wealth, the best riches any man should boast of should be to have Christ in you. Not in your lips, or not on your lips, but in your heart. Father, you know us all. And you know that soul we are about to save this money. Let no negative words keep that such soul from answering the call from you. Let no voice, oh God, stop that soul. I rebuke every spirit of procrastination. Child of God, you may not, you cannot tell, you may not even know if tomorrow you will see tomorrow. I am not saying we will not see tomorrow, but this is the day, this is the time. The voice of salvation is calling somebody. Please, give God a chance in your life. And it will make your life better for you. Don't give up on yourself because he has not given up on you. Just give him a chance. Father, we pray that you ask, ask that as you grant grace, your will in our lives will be done. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.